you know, accounting software is surprisingly expensive. And so you might wonder to yourself, why can't I just do this all in Excel? G'day there, my name is Philip Wong, I'm an accounting teacher, and I have developed an accounting system which is developed entirely in Excel, and I'm going to give it away entirely for free. The download link is, of course, in the description. Now, the one thing about Excel is that it's really easy to use, it's fantastic, but there is a problem. It thinks in, well, rows and it thinks in columns. This makes it really easy to track income and expenses. Let's say that we have some business transactions here. I could just hit auto sum, boop, and that gives me a total of $5,000 net change over this period. But if I just have rows and columns, I'm not really keeping track of my assets and my liabilities. Who? What do I have in stock and who do I owe money to? Those sorts of things are the domain of debits and credits in full-blown double entry accounting systems. And Excel doesn't naturally do this very, very well. So if you have a look at my new accounting system, you will see that this system follows the basic steps of accounting. Now, when you download my software, you'll find that there are three files. One of them is basically a poster that teaches you the basics of accounting in some very friendly formatted and colorful ways. The other two files are the actual accounting system themselves. One of them has some example data in it and the other one is largely blank. This is the actual file you'll be working on. Now the accounting system here uses five basic colors which I will explain in a moment and you will see that the basic accounting process follows this whole thing about events, journals, ledgers, trial balances, and financial reports. Now, the one thing I don't like about QuickBooks, Xero, MYOB, or other small business accounting softwares is that they pretend that in just 30 minutes, you, as somebody who's got no idea about accounting, can basically mind your own business, MYOB. It's there in the name, but I'm an accounting teacher and I don't believe that. And you'll actually see that this little open model here allows you to learn accounting as you go, as indeed you account for your own books. So you'll notice that the tabs I have down here, chart of accounts, open trial balance, general journal, general ledger, trial balance, income statement, and balance sheet. These follow the accounting process steps. So by using the software, you're actually learning the basics of accounting. And of course, when you get good at this system, you may wish to actually upgrade to a paid system. That's okay. But this is a great system to learn accounting and it's certainly enough to carry a micro business who's in the very first startup stages and doesn't want to spend the money. It's good enough for a community group, church group or something like that. And it's certainly a perfect tool for teachers and students to learn the basics of accounting. Okay, so that's the five basic steps of accounting. Let's see how I have implemented these in my little accounting software. We're going to start off by having a look at the example data. There are only four areas where you can change anything in this setup page. For the moment, most things are locked off because as I'm developing the software, those functions will become available. In the future, I hope to have companies, trusts, and other types of businesses, but for the moment, I've just kept it simple and I've just got available a sole trader. You can change your business name, you can set up the owner's name, and you need to set up the dates for which this file is going to be available for. You can set up your business to run your accounts as frequently as you like. Some people like to run them monthly, I'm going to run this quarterly, say here from April, May, and June. It depends on how frequently and how much volume you have in your business. We're just gonna do this for a quarter here. Next, you go to the chart of accounts. You'll see here that these are color-coded. That is not a mistake. You see, there are five basic elements to accounting. I color code these for my students to make it really fundamentally easy to understand how and why we are doing journal entries. I use blue for assets because, well, oftentimes we're talking about liquidity. I use red for liabilities because credit is the lifeblood of business. Also, there is a saying in English to be in the red when you owe money. There is another saying in English to be in the black, and that represents equity. 
And I also use black here because, well, think of leather and luxury. The owner of the business is trying to make themselves wealthy. Building capital is, after all, the whole point of capitalism. I use green for income because, well, think of green growth or maybe $100 bills. And what's the opposite of green growth? Think of autumn leaves or rust colour, expenses, things that eat away at the owner's wealth. These five elements form the very fundamental of accounting. And as you can see here, the total of the assets plus the expenses for the period will be equal to all the liabilities plus the equity plus any income. All the items on the left, the assets and the expenses, are ordinarily known as debit accounts and all the items on the right are ordinarily going to be credit accounts. Unlike QuickBooks Zero and MYOB, I actually expect that you understand the debits and credits in order to use this software. And this software and my series of videos will teach you how. So the first thing is to go through all of these accounts and change them to whatever would suit your business. I have set up this business based on myself where I run a YouTube channel. You probably don't run a YouTube channel, so you probably won't have an asset called video equipment. You probably won't have expenses such as studio rent expense. Instead, you would go ahead and change all of these accounts to be representative of your business. You'll notice that if you enter in a new account, say for example, stock at call, a number here will automatically appear. But of course, you could change this number to any other number if you wish. I'm just going to add an account called Merchandise, and that's account 105. And you can see that in the opening trial balance, we have this 105 Merchandise, but there's no value in it because we've just set it up. These other numbers here that are in the opening trial balance, well, basically I've been running my business for several, well, who knows how long, but certainly before the 1st of April 2022. Whatever I had at the close of last period, I'm going to have as the opening balances for the beginning of this period. If I scroll down here, you'll see that the income values are, well, zero, and of course all the expenses are zero. And that's because at the beginning of the period, well, nothing's happened yet. I haven't sold anything and I haven't spent any money just yet. But I do have some assets and I do still owe some money. I can then go to my general journal and start entering in all the changes that have occurred over the period. For example, I may have paid some studio rent expense and paid that out of the bank account. You can see here that with the journal journal, we have a row count, which is basically just a count. There's nothing special about that. A reference number or a journal journal reference number, a date, accounts, post references. Those are grayed out because you can't change those. Those are locked. Debit and credit value and a narration. Now I recognize that most of the time when you learn accounting by hand in either a high school or university, we will teach you to put the narrations underneath uh, the account here, but I've had to kick it off to the right here because Excel makes it difficult to put uh, different values in different columns. So let's say that we've bought some merchandise. We need to have a general journal reference. It'll be the next general journal reference up with last one was 13, so we can write 14. No need to write the GJ, it happens automatically. Let's say that we happen to do that on the next day after the last entry. We've got some new merchandise. You can press Alt down to get to the drop down menu, or of course you can just use the mouse. And merchandise is a current asset, so it'll be up the top. And I will have paid for this using the bank account. So I can just click on cash at bank. Uh, I don't know, perhaps we put $400 worth of merchandise. So $400 of merchandise is an asset that's increasing and cash at bank went down by $400 because I paid it out of the bank. Bought some new merch. Eh, that sounds good. Next, if you go to the general ledger, you'll notice that, well, there are a lot of these. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Let's zoom out so you can actually see just how many there are. In fact, each one of these things here is a ledger and we have as many ledgers as we have accounts. Yep, every single account here will have a corresponding ledger to it. You'll see that the largest space here is set aside for the cash at bank 
And that makes sense because, well, that ledger is being accessed all the time. But other things such as uh, such as Vayne Finance loan, well, I might only pay my my loan off once a period, or in this case, it's a quarter. So maybe I pay it off once a month. That would be three times over that period. I just don't need as many lines in that ledger. The really neat thing here is because I've already put cash at bank here. When I go into the ledger, that has been automatically posted. And this is the magic of the software that I'm developing here. You can see it happened on the 27th. The general journal reference was 14. So that when I go back to my journals, I know that if I look up 14, here is that. Here is the entry where it happened. And that the corresponding $400 went to merchandise. So if I scroll down to merchandise, where is it? Merchandise, $400, you can see that it has been posted correctly. You can go to the closing trial balance on this tab here and you'll see that in fact we have both the opening trial balance and also the closing trial balance next to each other. So this is neat because the opening trial balance here is literally copy pasted from the opening trial balance here. It's just that you now have an easy way to compare them and one minus the other gives us a net change up or down. Next, you can go to the income statement and balance sheet and while some areas here are locked off you'll find that quite a few of these can be changed as we go for example if your business does not use cost of goods sold you can simply delete that line and let's say that you consider bank fees to be well they actually are operating revenue items so they shouldn't be here I could just simply hit delete on bank fees and Ah, I've already actually got it here. And that value can come from the trial balance, the closing bank fees, bank fees, bank fees, bank fees, $10. There we go. So I've moved it from non-operating revenue into operating expenses. So businesses are a little bit different. Some have cost of goods sold, some don't. Um, some want to count for operating expenses separate of other non-operating expenses. I've given you the flexibility to make some changes here. Not everything is locked down. Same thing goes with the balance sheet as well. You can make a few changes here, but by and large, it's locked down so that it's fairly clear as to what you should be able to do here. Okay, so that is the accounting software system. As you can see, this is mostly designed for instructors. It is actually the educational version that you're looking at right now. But in future, I hope to offer a commercial version, which of course I will still make for free. It would be useful for very micro businesses and community clubs. I wanna have a CSV import feature so that you can take your bank records and code them up uh, reasonably. I wanna expand out the journal lines. You see, general journals of say 100 lines well that's tons if you're in an education setting for a classroom but of course businesses will need more than that i've already included the narrations i'll have a a feature here to allow you to generate small basic invoices i may even allow for gst abn reporting and all sorts of other fun things so what do you think if you find any bugs simply click on on this red button here and report bugs or tell me about any features that you would like to see implemented. My name's Philip Wong. I hope this has been really helpful. If you've got any comments or questions or queries, please find me on Facebook and let me know because I've been working on this little system for a little while here and um, I think it's pretty neat because we're really stretching the limits of what can be done with Excel, especially given the fact that this has no macros in it. So it can be used on Excel for web, on Excel for Macintosh and Excel for iOS. Unfortunately, it's not playing so well with Google Sheets. I'm aware of that. And unfortunately, you do need to have Microsoft Excel 2009 or above in order to run it because I've got some cool functions underneath the hood. But hey, it's free. And honestly, buying Excel is a lot cheaper than buying Xero or MYOB. My name's Philip Wong. I hope you find this helpful. All the best, folks.